everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. We've got a fun project today. What we're going to do today is we're going to take this ordinary drill bit and we're going to customize it into uh, like a stepped drill bit that uh, drills uh, the clearance hole for this thread and then our machines this uh, 82 degree angle for this countersunk fastener. So basically, if you imagine this being this drill bit, we're going to take this drill bit and turn it into something that kind of looks like that. And I'll explain all the particulars as we go. We're going to be doing this work using our KOLE B2060 tool and cutter grinder and our HIBCO uh, two-way cam relieving fixture. So I've already got my spindle at the same center height as my HIBCO fixture. I put the two flute cam into the HIBCO fixture because of course the drill bit has two flutes. So we're going to need that. And another thing that's super important before you go trying to dial anything into this fixture, you have to choose your reliefs and set them. Um, otherwise your dialing won't be accurate. And we'll explain more about that. But if you come over here and take a look, I've got this set up right now. with 15 thou radial relief. So that's going to be relief around the radius. And I've got it set up with 20 thou axial relief. And so that's going to be relief in this direction. So we're going to have radial relief in this direction and we're going to have axial relief in this direction. I've got my drill bit set rotationally now. So basically this line is aligned with this zero. And what that means is that the, the camming action has stopped uh, coming out and it has begun to come back in. And so when these are aligned, I want my future cutting edge to be slightly below center. This way, as that cutting edge passes through center, a relief is being created. If I were to put this above center, I would actually end up with a negative relief at my cutting edge, which would be disastrous. Now that I've got my uh, reliefs set with these dials and I have my rotational position set, I'm going to dial this in. And what I'm going to go for here is I want the tip of this pilot to be uh, I don't know, four thou bigger than this diameter of the pilot. So that basically from these corners, there'll be radial relief all the way around. And uh, there'll be also uh, like a slight angular relief so that nothing can bind or interfere. I don't want to be cutting with this whole edge. I want to cut with the front and then I want clearance behind. So this is going to end up being slightly bigger than this. And that's what I'm dialing in now. The way I'm going to make this pilot slightly smaller at the back than at the front is with it doing its camming thing, I'm going to get it starting out at zero here. And as I move forwards and rotate, I'm going to want that to read um, plus two back here. So you can see it's, it's kind of just about running true now. I've got a ways to go. I've got to, I've got to uh, make those adjustments. So I'm zero there, and as I come forward and rotate through, I come up to plus two. So that's just where I want to be. Uh, the cutting edge is going to be bigger, and back here is going to be just slightly smaller, so there's clearance. The reason I said earlier that it was important that I set my reliefs first before trying to dial anything is because if this were just running true or running with reliefs that I didn't want, then dialing here and here would be lying to me because as this rotates, it advances towards the grinding wheel. And because this is a helix along this angle here, um, it's, it's all a big combination uh, because from here to here, a lot of things are happening. The, the, the whole machine is coming forwards. And so now, anyways, I'm not explaining this very well, but now I know that when this thing's done, and I measure here, and then I come and I measure over here that I'm going to have relief at the backside. Now that I'm happy with the setup so far, I'm going to take this dial out so I'm not just firing sparks at the poor thing, uh, as seems to 
This would be something I did once upon a time here. But I'm going to take this out uh, because I'm done with it. And we're going to carry on with our setup. Now that this is mostly set up, um, well, completely set up actually, I'm going to modify a grinding wheel to give me uh, a straight pilot and then the 82 degrees countersink. So I've got this wheel that, you know, I've done something similar with in the past. It has an angle uh, carved into it and it's got a flat on the front of it. So I'm just going to take this and put it in there and doll it up a little and make sure it's going to do exactly what I want it to do. And at the same time, I'll get it running true. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, redo this angle and make sure this angle is, is proper. So now we want to be 82 degrees included on our counter sinking part of our drill bit. And so that means the one side has to be 41 degrees. Of course, on either side of 45 degrees, there is a 41 degrees. And we have to be very careful that we grind the wheel so that it'll give us the correct 41 degrees on the actual workpiece. So basically, because if, if this was 90 degrees, 82 degrees is going to be like here. So I want to leave, I want to go to the 41 degrees that leaves extra meat on the wheel so that when we actually grind on the part, it removes extra meat on the part and gets me to the proper 41 degrees on the proper side of 45. I hope that makes some sense. Yeah. So there, I'm at the 41 degrees that is on the proper side of the 45 to leave more meat on this edge of the grinding wheel. Uh, that way, this edge of the grinding wheel will take extra meat off of the surface I'm grinding here and give me the, tr the true 82 degrees included. This little bit here is a steel thing impregnated with little bits of diamond uh, and that that can cut a grinding wheel. One thing that's super important anytime you're dealing with angles is that everything be bang on dead nut center height and I mean the reason is I'm gonna dress bang on on center height. If I exaggerate this and I was to dress up here you can see I'd be creating an entirely different angle. And down here, the same thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manipulate this and get it into position so that it's at the proper center height. Now that this is at the proper angle, I can dress that angle onto the wheel. So I've got my diamond bits set at center height. So we will put a true 41 degree angle on there now. American dust collector here so I can catch the grinding wheel that comes off so that we're not leaving all that crap in. There we go. So we're all set up here. Dresser's at height, wheel's at the proper angle. I'm going to turn on my uh, dust and spark collecting machine. Around. And we're going to dress this out, get it running true and at the proper angle. Good. Now I'm going to straighten this head out back to zero where I want it so I can dress uh, this flat face of the wheel and get that where I want it to be. Now I'm going to set the length of my pilot. I want this thing to be able to, uh, it's a quarter inch plate I'm going to use this on. So I want the pilot to be able to go all the way through the quarter inch plate before the countersinking begins. So that's, that's what I'm setting it up for. We're all set up now. 
we've got our axial relief set, our radial relief set. What we're going to see here is the grinding wheel is going to hit back here ever so slightly before it makes it to up here. So this is going to clean up a wee bit before this does. That's what's going to give us that clearance at the back of this pilot. What I'm doing now is I'm just doing a final check to see if these two edges are running true to each other. And they are. You can see I got a zero there. Come around. I got a zero there. So that's good. We're all set up, ready to go. Got to turn on my dust collector. Grinder. So here you can see with the radial relief that we put on this thing, it actually touched first uh, way at the back uh, and it's going to work its way to the front. So I'm just going to stop for a second. I want to see where we're at. I want to measure my diameter and I want to know how far I have to go. And I've already set a zero on my crossfeed hand wheel so that, you know, if there's a hundred thou to go, I'll go say, well, I'll put 40 on here. That'll give me 80 off the diameter and leave 10 for finishing. Something like that. So what I want to see here is that at the actual cutting edge, measuring about 30, that it's bigger than in behind here. And yeah, it's a couple thousand smaller back here, so that's perfect. I'll go 25, see where I'm at. So I've got 10 thou to go all together. Uh, I want to make a clearance um, for a quarter inch. So I'm going to be around 265, 266 clearance for a quarter inch bolt. So you can see now we're, we're rough down, but the finish is, is really gross. It's, it's really coarse. Um, and that was done intentionally. I didn't explain it at the time, but I did a pretty quick pass with my diamond past the grinding wheel. And what that does is it, it just, chews it up more and gives more uh, aggressive cutting um, action. So the heat stays down and you get the material off quicker, but you get a really gross finish. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish dress this wheel. I'm going to put a real fine finish on the angle, a real fine finish on the, the flat up front, and then I'm going to paint this all up with a marker and touch off uh, to it again. And then we're going to really shine this thing up and make it be a, a, a nice, a nice tool.
you know, that, that wheel is so small uh, in diameter. Also, something, something else I can do to improve the finish. Because this wheel is so small in diameter, it really isn't spinning fast enough to be at its surface feet per minute passing by the workpiece that, it, that I want to be. So I'm going to reverse these two pulleys here, put the, the slightly smaller one on, on the spindle and put the slightly bigger one on the motor. That'll give me a little more RPM. That'll also help me with my surface finish. So now I'm going to put that real, that same real fine finish on here. I'm just going to move by it very slowly. I just like to put marker on things that I'm working on when everything's shiny. It's kind of hard to tell where you're, where you're hitting. Now I'll know. Touching. Now, because we took some wheel off, I have to move the table along here. Just keep backing this off until we clean up on that angle. Can't really see in there, so I'm just going the tiniest bit at a time. Just starting to clean up now. Okay. So we'll work our way out. We'll measure it up and we'll see how far we have to go. Oh, maybe 5,000 to go. We're still. Uh, smaller at the back, so that's all good. So I'm going to in-feed a total of like two and a half on the cross-feed, and that should get us right where we want to be. I don't want to rough this wheel up. I want a nice finish, so I'm going to go nice little cuts, and I'm just going to tickle away at this thing. Okay, so we're, should be to size, yep, and I'm, I'm happy with the finish, All right, I think that's, uh, that's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock out the camming action on these, and I'm going to run a dial on both of these surfaces and show you guys that there is, in fact, relief has been put onto these. This uh, locks out the radial camming action. And there's a second one on the back here that locks out the uh, axial camming action. So now, you can see by this dial, this thing's running perfectly true. It's not 
uh, going radially or axially at this at this time. So I'm going to get a dial on here, and we're going to look at those uh, those reliefs. God, I hate this dial. <laughs> so here we are at the cutting edge, and I've got my dial set to zero. And as I rotate through, you can see that this movement of the dial is showing us the clearance that's been put on the radial clearance that's been put on this um, pilot. Here I come up to the cutting edge. I'm going to set my zero again. Now, here we're actually measure, measuring a combination of both radial and axial relief. As, as we see this dial fall away, that ensures us that you know, there is, in fact, relief. But because this is you know, nearly 45 degrees, it does have some aspect of relief in both directions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just cut off a little piece of material, throw this in the lathe, and we're going to actually see it work. Who, who didn't clean the lathe? <laughs> Makeup! Wardrobe! A mess. So you're supposed to clean up after your last jobs. I know. Breaking my own rules. Okay, well, you have fun with that. I'm going to sit down. Yeah. I've got a little remnant of material here that I sawed off and put it in my uh, in my lathe, and I'm just going to take a lick off it, clean it up, face it off, center drill it, and then we're going to get uh, our tool and see how she works. Got one on you? Got me. Okay, we've got a nice center hole there. And the new tool. So the pilot's out the back, and now we're starting to cut the countersink. See how that's coming along. I want it just a bit deeper. I want it to be flush or maybe a hair under. Let's try that. Yeah. I'm happy with that close to flush. Uh, 
I started drilling that just with the pilot part here that uh, both chips were coming off evenly which means even my hand bombed sharpening of the end of this thing was pretty darn close. So here's our our tool after having uh, done its thing and here's our sample piece with the drilled and countersunk hole and you know there it is with the, uh, the screw in there. So I know people are going to say you could have just bought one of these from McMaster Car for 10 bucks or whatever. And sure, that's, that's not wrong. Um, but the thing is, we could have made this any angle we wanted for any custom job. If it was a custom valve body type thing, like anything. Um, this angle from 90 degrees uh, all the way to one degree, we could create this effect. And th that's what I think is fun about it. Where did I put that damn tool? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There it is. Well, that's it for today's show, guys. Hope you uh, enjoyed and maybe saw something new. And if you want to see something different, any sharpening of tools, something custom, just drop us a line. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. And please like, share, and subscribe. Bye for now. Peace now. Oh, and, uh, and the subscribe, uh, liking. Look at all the hair. Get that in there and start that over again. <laughs>